Hello everyone. This video will go over the basic rules for this simple Atoma as well as the specific capitalist moves and capitalist cards. To start, I want to note that the rule book for Crisis and Control has two different versions of the Atoma. This one is the simple mode, and I'll go through how you would play that out. But there is also an advanced mode. Uh, just practically speaking, these are all the cards you will use for the simple mode. You've got your deck of cards that we're going to go through in a minute. And then you've got some other cards that will help you uh, interpret what is on your deck of cards. So you've got your action criteria and then just some uh, criteria for specific actions and how you would go through that process. Uh, the more complicated advanced mode has a lot more pieces uh, that we're gonna go through later. So check back for the other video that I'm gonna post on that at another time. The Atomas for the capitalist, middle class, and working class players play very similarly. So we're going to walk through what a Atoma card from the deck looks like and how you would go through the process of determining what that player would do. And then we'll look at the uh, individual cards that you'll have to interpret the different moves in order so we can understand how each one will play out. Let's start by looking at one individual card from an Atona deck, and we'll look at how we would walk through the process of determining what would happen with that card. First card here, so you flip it over, and what we notice is the top row are the different potential actions that could be taken by the Atoma player, and uh, they, they're prioritized from left to right. So you would look and determine, can you do the first action? Uh, if not, then you can do the second, then the third, then the fourth. If you are able to do the first action, then this, uh, this middle bonus will be given if you're able to do that. So uh, this symbol means propose a bill. And then if you're able to do that, you get to have these, this additional uh, bonus. If you are unable to perform any of the four actions, then you would be able to do the special action, which is on the bottom instead. Right underneath the action options are the policies that the Atoma can try to attempt bills for. Now, if for whatever reason you are unable to do any of those top level actions and you are unable to do the special action, then you would apply political pressure and add three of the voting cubes to the voting bag. Now, a player might look at this and be a little intimidated by, well, what do these symbols even mean? When I first looked at it, I was not really sure what I was looking at. But when I look over here, oh, there are these cards that they can be readily available that will explain what those different uh, moves are. And notice for these actions, you have simple mode and advanced mode. You need to make sure you're keeping track of which one you are playing. Again, right now we're looking at simple mode, not advanced mode. So for example, proposed bill, simple mode, you must have a bill marker available and there must be at least one policy listed on the AI card that does not match your desired policy. So in that case, you would look at taxation and the foreign trade and one of the extra cards is this desired policy card. And right now, this is the capitalist Atoma. You would look, and if taxation is already on 3C, then you would not propose a bill to move away from that. If foreign trade was on 6A, you would not be able to propose a bill to make that change. But uh, if they weren't, then you could prioritize in that order, okay? So this would be the priority chart that you could use for the, um, the, the capitalist player, but then any other player can make use of this if uh, we have Atomas from the different factions. Mm -hmm. 
At the beginning of an Atoma's turn, they will perform any free actions if necessary. Now, each player's Atoma will treat uh, the various actions a little bit differently, so you want to be well versed in what this rule book says. I think what I might end up doing is making copies of the individual pages just so I can have a single cheat sheet instead of keeping the entire book out, especially if I end up uh, trying to do games with more than one uh, automated player. So uh, you begin with free actions. The next thing they'll do is to flip over the card and then walk through the steps to uh, complete all the tasks on that card. Once they have completed everything that they need to do on that card, their turn is over in simple mode. Though the Atoma will perform some free actions if needed at the beginning, the rulebook does also note that there are going to be some free actions that happen throughout the Atoma's turn, and they can do multiple free actions if the turn or the circumstances deem it necessary, uh, but then other free actions will be completely ignored. Pages eight and nine of the Crisis and Control rulebook also delve into the spending of influence on immediate votes as well as elections. So, so the players should uh, keep that page uh, close at hand and keep an eye on it as they are working through the Atoma play. Some things to note for the final round, Atomas will not propose any bills for the immigration policy in the final round. They will only propose bills for foreign trade if they can call for immediate votes. It will ignore foreign trade and move to its next option. During the election phase, the AI card pile will have five cards left in the last round. If by chance there is a need for more cards, uh, the deck can be reshuffled and uh, new cards can be used from there. In the final vote in the elections phase, the Atomas will spend any remaining influence that they have. And the designers have acknowledged that there is quite possibly situations that might come up that uh, aren't covered in the rule book. So if that's the case, just use your best judgment and make a sensible decision based on what the circumstances are in front of you. Let's look at the free actions for the capitalist class. The CCA, which is the capitalist class Atoma, will perform its free actions automatically at different points during its turn. So they acknowledge that up front. So let's look at uh, what they can do. At the beginning of their turn, they will always uh, adjust their prices so that they're in the middle position unless the policies are as follows. So if it's a 6A policy, then the prices of food and luxury are going to go up to the highest. If 4C is in effect, then health is gonna to go to its highest. And then if 5C is in effect, then education is gonna to go to its highest. So that would be the caveats that would make um, the prices change. Otherwise, they're always gonna to go to the middle at the beginning of their turn. Adjusting wages. The capitalist class will not adjust its wages on its own. It will keep the minimum allowable wage. So whatever the labor policy is, they are going to keep the wages at that price. If the working class puts a strike to token on the capitalist class company, then you can use the response to strike card to determine what would happen next. So in this case, for each company with a strike token, you check if it's got if it's automated at all or is the only operational company you have, you could draw two. Otherwise, you would draw one. And if any of the cards show the um, influence symbol, increase the company's wages to L3. At the beginning of the following round, adjust wages again for all of your companies to the minimum allowable wage. So it's saying you would draw from this deck. And in the deck, some of the cards don't have anything on the bottom left corner, but other cards do. So if this symbol shows up in the corner, you would take that action. And if it doesn't, you would just not do anything. So uh, that's, that's how you would respond to a strike situation. There will ne never be bonuses. 
buying storage, uh, the capitalist Atoma will automatically buy a storage tile whenever it has more resources than it can store, even outside of its turn. Uh, if it has already built storage dedicated to a resource and it produces more than it can store, it won't build an additional storage for it. The access will be lost. So they can, uh, just like the regular game, uh, when you have a player playing the capitalist, they can buy one additional storage unit for each good or service. The Toma will receive benefits at the beginning of its turn. So whatever benefits are stored there, they can receive. And they will also automatically pay off any loans if they have at least 100 in their capital. Other clarifications given in the rule book. If the first action shown is a special action, instead of a bonus being listed, there are some additional conditions that are on the card that will allow that special action priority card to move upward. When using the simple mode, check only the first condition. If that con condition is fulfilled, they will perform the listed special action. Here is an example of one of these special action cards. So you see the uh, pink hand is uh, representing that special action. And then you would go and look at the conditions if you have at least 150 in revenue. And again, if it is the advanced mode, you would also look at the second one to determine uh, if it is uh, going to be a card that uh, goes through. But for uh, the, the simple mode, we just make sure the first condition is met. And once we determine that you have 150 in revenue, you can go and do the special action, which is to move half of your revenue to your capital. So that is how you would apply that clarification. Other clarifications for the capitalist Atoma Preparation phase, always discard the four companies that you have on your market and get new ones. When you build a company, you will always look to buy a company that has the fewest operational companies on your board. You don't worry about what the middle class has or the state, only the capitalist companies. When selling to the foreign market, when selling to the foreign market, the capitalist Atoma will sell as much as they possibly can and they will sell from the free trade zone and then from the storage on their board. And finally, when making a business deal, if there are two business deal cards available and they can afford both, it will buy the one with the higher cost. So these are the free actions and the uh, different stipulations of the Atoma. Let's look at their cards. These are the criteria cards for the capitalist Atoma. The first two cards interpret the actions of the Atoma player. So these are gonna be the things that are at the top of those cards so you can see what to do. Again, you have simple mode and advanced mode. Uh, you have to make sure you understand which one you are playing. And if you're not using the extra pieces that I showed you earlier in this video, then you are playing the simple mode. So propose bill, you have to have bill markers available to propose a bill and there must be at least one policy that does not match your desired policy. So again, when you look at these uh, policies, you would look closely at the seven that are there uh, and the, the two that are on the card. If they don't match up, if either one of them doesn't match up with your pro policies, you would do it. But if both of them match, then you would move on to the next option. Lobbying. The influence you have has to be less than the influence of all the other players to lobby. And just a reminder, the lobby action is to spend 30 to get three influence cubes. So you would do that if this criteria is met. Special action we just talked about, you have to meet the bonus criteria on the card that is flipped. And if you, in simple mode, uh, meet the first condition, then you're able to take that action. For the build company criteria, there has to be at least one company on the market that you can afford and at least one empty space on the board. And then for simple mode, you also have to have unemployed workers available to, to staff it, to, to make it operational, or it has to be an automated company. If you can't build a company and you have at least one non-operational company that you can sell for 20 or more, you can perform sell company. So again, you need to be able to build and staff your company from the unemployment pool. Otherwise, you can sell a company that's not operational. 
Finally, you can sell to the foreign market and you have to be able to perform at least two transactions on the current export card to do so. The building company criteria lays out what your priority should be when performing the build company move. So you would start at the top, first make sure unemployed workers are available, as already discussed, uh, or you can have an automated company and use that. And then you would make sure that the card you choose is from the industry with the fewest operational companies. You have to make sure it doesn't fulfill requirements for a trade union. From there, agricultural, luxury, media, then healthcare and education, and whichever uh, corresponding public service is not being produced, whichever is more expensive, or you can do random if those aren't met, the highest production, or you can randomly do it. So uh, this you would work your way down the line, uh, and if at the end all things are equal, you can randomly do it. Again, you have to make sure that the company will become operational, and um, when workers from both classes are available, you can as you would prioritize middle class workers, unless there's a demonstration, at which case you would assign working class workers. When placing machinery you would use the following priority. Okay, first of all, you would look and see which, you would, first of all, you would look and see which industries don't have a machinery token. And then if you have more than one company that would fulfill that criteria, you would do agricultural first, luxury second, healthcare or education, and whichever one's not being produced as a public service or then whichever is more expensive or random. Then the highest production would be the next one. And then finally at random. When determining what company to sell, you can use this criteria. Highest cost would be first. If operational with working class workers, requirements for a trade union would be met, would be second. Uh, third would be fewest matching unemployed workers available, and fourth would be at random. When assigning workers, you would use this criteria. First, you do not have any other operational companies in that industry, so that would be the first priority. If either that isn't met or you have more than one, you would choose the one that does not cause the requirements for the trade unions to be met. Third, you would prioritize media. Fourth would be healthcare or education. Whichever one is not being produced, and then if they're both being produced, whichever is more expensive or random between would be the third criteria there. Agricultural, luxury, and at random. The last two cards we already discussed, so we won't go over them again. So that is how you generally play the Atoma players and the example of the capitalist class. That is where I will pause this video. In the next video, I'll go over the specifics of the middle class and the working class. Mm -hmm.